Hello, my name is Charlie Donahue, uh, and my wife and I have donated uh, over 100 lectures, college courses actually, to the Westwood Library and the Norwood Library. And uh, this is the second iteration. So I'm gonna, today I'm going to talk about 19 new courses that have been added to the existing courses. And uh, first I'm going to just do an overview of what's in there, if that's maybe all you're interested in. And then I'm going to go into more depth, just to maybe want you to go in and, and look at these. The feedback we've got so far is we have middle school kids taking these courses, high school kids. Kids have taken them and actually used their experience in the courses to get into college. And in a college interview, they said, I've taken a college course. Grandparents are introducing them to their kids. So we've got a lot of interesting use out of these courses so far. So we'd like to uh, add these new courses and, and, and get you familiar with them. So first of all, I'm just going to summarize the categories that we have and then go through them in more depth. We're going to add to the literature courses that we have, Building a Better Vocabulary, uh, Professor Kevin Flanagan, University of Pennsylvania, Joyce's Ulysses, Professor Heffernan from Dartmouth College, Classics of British Literature, uh, Professor Joan Sutherland, uh, she's from University College in London, California Institute of Technology, Masterpieces of Ancient Greek Literature, Professor Schenker, University of Wisconsin, Classic Novels, Meeting the Challenge of Great Literature, Professor Arnold Weinstein, Brown University. The next group, we have one new course in mathematics, Big Data, How Data Analytics is Transforming the World, Tim Chartier, Davidson College. We have a new group in history, The Age of Benjamin Franklin, Professor Robert Allison, Suffolk University, A Brief History of the World, Professor Stearns, George Mason University, The Rise of Rome, Gregory Alternate, University of Wisconsin, Turning Points in American History, Professor Edward O'Donnell, College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Gibbon's greatest book, The Professor is Leo Damrosa, Harvard University. Another art course, Leonardo da Vinci in the Italian High Renaissance, Professor George Bent, Washington and Lee University. For business, a new courses. The Entrepreneur's Toolkit, Professor Michael Goldsby, Bay State University. Thinking about cybersecurity, from cybersecurity to cyber warfare, Professor Paul Rosenweig, George Washington University Law School. We have a new one in music, the concerto. Professor Robert Greenberg, the hero of the San Francisco Symphony performances, it's a new one on what's the concerto. In under health, this is a new category. Mastering Tai Chi. David Dorian Ross, international master Tai Chi instructor. Yoga for a healthy mind and body. Heidi Somas, certified yoga instructor. The Mayo Clinic Diet. The healthy approach to weight loss, Donald Hensrod, Mayo Clinic. And practicing mindfulness, an introduction to meditation, Mark Muset, Rhodes College. So now I'm going to basically go through each of these in a little bit more detail to give you a flavor of what's in the courses that may want you to look at them more. Building a better vocabulary. Who needs vocabulary? It's very important for kids particularly to be able to learn to write. Well, what words do I use to express things? What do I say for criti criticizing something? What do I say something uh, that are cranky words? I mean, what are the vocabulary words, the new words you can learn to express yourself well to be a better writer? 36 lectures, 30 minutes per lecture. Professor James Heffernan at Dartmouth College. Joyce's Ulysses was considered the greatest book of its time. The greatest American writer said it was the greatest book. It was banned in the United States, banned in France. Uh, I guess it was accepted in France, banned in Ireland and England when it first came out. It's all about the jo James Joyce's reenactment of a classical story. Dr. Heffernan explains what it's about. The second chapter was written so nobody would ever go beyond it. Only with Dr. Heffernan's help might you understand enough to go beyond it. But it's a great, great book. Heffernan is the, the teacher. This is the, the one on ancient Greek literature. Professor David Schenker is, the, is a teacher. 12 lectures, 30 minutes each. Who's Homer? What's the Iliad? Homer and the Odyssey. What are these great classical historical things written 500 BC? 
lyric poetry, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, Aristophanes. Just to have some idea of what these stories are about, who, why do they write them? Herodotus, the father of history. Thucydides, another father of history. And finally, Plato. Great, great literature. Another one in the literature, Classics of British Literature, written by Dr. John Sutherland. Chaucer, Shakespeare, Swift, Defoe, Gibbon, Blake, Scott and Burns, Keats, Frankenstein, Miss Austen, Pride and Prejudice, Dickens, Jane Austen, Jane Eyre, Shaw, Yeats, and, and Joyce Bloomsbury. 48 lectures of 30 minutes each on these classic novels of literature to allow you to go in and maybe read the book with some understanding of what it's about. The next group, the most prof popular professor at Brown University, Arnold Weinstein. We already have a series, Classics of American Literature, in our collection. This is a new collection. 36 lectures of 30 minutes each. Defoe, Balzac, Bronte, Melville, Dickens, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Kafka, Proust, the more Joyce, Wolf, and Faulkner. Tremendous writers with a with somebody explaining it to make the books much more interesting and challenging. The next category is big data, how data analysis is transforming the world. It's really a crucial area of how businesses are using data, banks, healthcare organizations, insurance. What about, what is big data? How are people using it? It's a, a, a very, very important area. If you have any interest in math, or even if you don't, understand what these math people are doing with big data. That's a terribly important area, anybody going into those areas that I just mentioned. History. One of the greatest minds of early American history and literature is Benjamin Franklin. This is a wonderful book of 24 lectures about Benjamin who started off learning how to print in Boston with his brother. At age 15, he decided to get out of Boston and go to Philadelphia, They're much more open-minded. He went on to Paris with Thomas Jefferson and John Adams got the French to help us in our revolution, which we never could have won without the French coming in and helping us. He was a scientist and respected. He's a tremendous, interesting, and he's self-educated. This is a wonderful way for kids to get into understanding. And his autobiography, which people draw on, was written when he's 87, but it talks about his days in Boston, why he decided to leave Boston, why he decided not. He couldn't go to... He, he went to Boston Public High School, one of the first high schools, couldn't afford to go to college, self-educated. A wonderful story on a biography of one of the most fascinating people in American history. A brief history of the world. Well, you know, we go through education in the United States, we learn about European history, our history, our Revolutionary War. We know very little about the history of China, Russia, India, other parts, of the, little of the history of Islam. I mean, so, why not go back and get an overview of the history of the world? 36 lectures of 30 minutes each, Professor Peter Stearns, Provost Professor of History at George Mason University. This would be a wonderful introduction, anybody interested in history, to learn about what, what happened that we don't learn about in our traditional education. The rise of Rome started with nothing and took over the Mediterranean, took over England. How did this whole thing happen? Uh, and, 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 they learned from the Greeks, they learned from other groups, but it's the history of how it came out of nothing and became the greatest power in the world of, of the time. Gibbon, in England, wrote a book about the decline. How did the Roman Empire from the strongest power in the world disintegrate, separate over to the eastern part of the empire? That was attacked. How did this happen? How did it decline? How did it fall apart? Gibbon wrote this book. And a young guy named Shakespeare met with Gribbon. They used to eat in the pubs. And suddenly, this guy, Shakespeare is writing stories about Anthony and Cleopatra. I don't know any idea who these people were, but because Shakespeare met in the pub with Gibbon, another part of literature evolved. But this is a classic story that is valuable for historians to learn about. Turning points in American history. We all study American history. We go by date by date. But what were the things that happened in our history 
to change things overnight. The near disaster of the King Philip War. Most people don't know that we had a war in Massachusetts called the King Philip War. A third of the people who lived here were killed by the Indians, and we killed the Indians or shipped them off someplace else, or they became uh, uh, war, war clothes like us. That, that's a beginning part of our own history that a lot of times, but this goes through 48 lectures of a half an hour each, talking about crucial moments in American history, all the way from our Revolutionary War, before the Revolutionary War, through this, the uh, Civil War, you know, right up until you know, 2001, the 9-11 attacks. A tremendous review of those turning points in American history. Another one now we're getting into that everybody should learn about because it's affecting healthcare, banking, education, cybersecurity. From cybercrime to cyber warfare, what is it? We already have a lecture in the library on cybersecurity. This is a new one. Of viruses, botnets, and logic bombs. We don't even know what those are, but those are crucial things. So here it is, 18 lectures of 30 minutes each. Paul Rosenwald, George Washington University Law School, talking about what is cybersecurity? What is the threat, threat to our culture? Not just the Russians in elections, but what are people doing? The British National Health Service had to close down because it had been hacked. How do, you how do you prevent these things happening? The Entrepreneur's Toolkit. You know, startup companies, so much of our new businesses, the software companies of today didn't even exist 20. What if you're an entrepreneur with an idea and you'd like to take that idea and make it into a business, what are the things you need to understand and learn about? What's a business model? What's a business plan? What's a marketing strategy? What's an income statement? What's a cash flow statement? How, these are basics you need to know to make your idea out there and work. It's a, it's a very valuable intellectual property. Uh, unter, you know, a whole bunch of very interesting things you need to know about to see where would you get help, how would you do these things. We are also introducing this year a couple of new courses. Leonardo da Vinci, wonderful book has been written about. Here's a course you could take 36 lectures about a man who was self-educated. He was a great artist, a great a thinker, a great inventor, uh, a great sculptor. He did everything all. Also during his lifetime, Gutenberg invented something called a printing press. So suddenly ideas were shared around the world. So it didn't need to be a guy in your town that had an idea. So he picked up everything he could. He did autopsies of horses' legs to look at the muscles, so his sculptures didn't show a, a muscle, but six muscles. He did autopsies of, to make his muscles in, his, in, the, in the stomach or on the arms. Fascinating man who self-educated in a crucial part of history, but just how he became self-educated is a wonderful, wonderful story. We have actually a man in San Francisco who if you a contributor to the San Francisco, San Francisco Symphony, you're invited to his lectures. You come in before the symphony, and he's one of the most popular guys out there. We have four of them already in our library collection. This is one called the Concerto. I have no clue what a concerto is, but he'll tell you. Bach's Brandenburg Concerto, that's very famous. Beethoven's, Mozart's, Mendelssohn, Tchaikovsky, and Rachmaninoff. All of their concertos, he explains it, what it is, you listen to the music and maybe get to appreciate much more. This is 24 lectures uh, of 30, uh, actually 45 minutes per lecture. We also have here, for the first time, what I would call health-related uh, lectures that might be of interest. Practicing mindfulness, <laughs> an introduction to meditation. Why do people meditate? What are they getting out of it? What does it change? Uh, it's 24 lectures by Professor Mark Muse. He's a professor of religious studies, director of Asian studies program at Rhodes College. So it gives you a sense of what's meditation about? What's the benefit that you get? How does it deal with stress? How does it make you more productive, more innovative? 24 lectures on mindfulness and introduction to meditation. Mastering Tai Chi. 
24 lectures, 30 minutes each. Why do people do Tai Chi? Why are large numbers of people showing up and do Chai Chi together? What's the purpose of it? What do you get out of it? What does it involve? How might it help you deal with stress issues, be more productive, be, uh, having greater incentives? Tai Chi with the feet, the shoulders, the chest, all of these aspects of Tai Chi. The Mayo Clinic Diet, the healthy approach to weight loss. 10 lectures by this physician at the Mayo Clinic, and that's especially Donald Hensrud, MD, MPH, Professor of Nutrition, Preventive Medicine at the Mayo Clinic. Cooking, exercise, all of the different aspects that you need to think about and consider in weight loss. Yoga, why do people do yoga? Pain relief, a healthy heart, addictive behavior, depression and anxiety, all of these issues are dealt with by yoga. Well, I hope this is of interest to you. Again, these courses, these 19 courses I quickly summarized, are available now at the Westwood Library at the Norwood Library. In addition to, it takes 100 courses totally. Please get out, take advantage of it. Introduce it to your friends. If you're a grandparent, introduce it to your grandchildren. If you're a grandchild, introduce it to your grandfather. But I, we have some very interesting stories about families watching some of these things together. <coughs> and we've heard kids say, I didn't realize my father was that smart. And parents say, I didn't know the kid was that smart. So this, the family environment is wonderful, but they're right there now available for you. Take advantage of it if you can. And I want to thank the Westwood Media Center for making this available to you. Thank you very much.